Welcome to the Citizens Chat Show today. And as we wrap up the year 2023, of course, we have many varying opinions. And if you followed the show throughout the year, we discussed several topics. And today we shall be wrapping up uh, with a lot of discussion, of course, uh, on some of the key events that define the year. I expect that to be insightful, but also interesting as we look back on the year that was, or the year that we are concluding, but also uh, dream on, on this continuous journey of building our nation moving into 2024. If you look back in the year and the shows that we had, we had several issues political here. We discussed issues like by-elections, we discussed the FTC crisis, we discussed um, the different uh, pros political processions around the country, including that of Muhozi, but also Bobby Wine, which surprised, um, surprised many. But uh, I remember one of the panelists saying it's shocking that it's a surprise. So mm -hmm. uh, among other issues, of, of course, economically, um, our country continued to face issues around commodity prices, but also um, there were queries into the economics of how of expenditure within the government. We had a resurgence of issues around cooperatives uh, that was also a subject of discussion here. But also internationally, we saw the US suspending AGOA and um, also World Bank suspension. So there was that international dimension to it. And of course, we also had social issues, but social, very political social issues around homosexuality, but also issue around the Balalo and the land issues that uh, we continue to face. And not forgetting, of course, the international geopolitics, including a lot of coups on the continent and the Israel-Palestine conflict. But with me today are uh, uh, persons more senior than me, um, incredible panelists, to help us wrap up um, what were the key defining political, economic, and social events that happened in 2023. And I'll start by introducing them. Um, starting with a gentleman uh, on the far right, Major Awich Pola, who is a direct director External uh, services? Uh, yeah, external affairs. External affairs, affairs of the uh, mighty NRM. Okay. <laughs> 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 or the National Resistance <laughs> Movement, or as his neighbor would call it, uh, Ame. <laughs> and, um, of course, we also have Mr. Osheno Joseph, um, a UPC ideologue and media personality. You're most welcome once again. It's a pleasure to be here. I am actually the president of UPC who has not been declared and NRA is NRA, yeah. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, um, to reconcile that perhaps uh, we also have <laughs> Dr. Ojambo Robert, who is a senior lecturer and also the head of department of uh, history at Chamburgo University. You're really most welcome. Glad to be here. Honored to have you. Glad to be here. Yes, and of course, uh, ever green, ever present, uh, Dr. Virete Sara, uh, Executive Director, Center for Constitutional Governance. You're most welcome. Thank you, and uh, glad to be here on the show. Yes, thank you very much. And I'll start with you, uh, uh, Dr. Virete. Um, just generally, what were some of the key political moments for you that uh, defined the year 2023? Well, maybe to start with the, on the politics which goes hand in hand with security. Yes. I, I think for me, the issue that stood out is what even the president has talked about recently, the ADF. We have fought, as a country, we have fought the ADF for three decades. Mm. At one moment, it is announced defeated. At another moment, it is announced resurrected. And uh, this year we have had to send troops again into DRC. They went mm. in at the December 2022. They've spent the whole of this year mm. in DRC. And uh, we constructed roads in DRC mm. as our roads are swept away. We also sent troops for the DRC peacekeeping force under the auspices of the East African community. 
But just this year, the ADF killed students yes. in a secondary school mm. in Kasese, yeah. as children. well as tourists. Mm. And we have had the two twin bombings in Kampala as we go into Christmas. Mm. So how secure are we as a country? Mm. We have had also, you know, the uh, money put on the head of, of, of some of the ADF leaders. Mm -hmm. So do we have the resurrection of ADF? Where do we stand politically? I would like to know mm -hmm. as a citizen and how secure are we as a country? Does the government have capacity to protect mm -hmm. the citizens with their property? Mm -hmm. As the author they take in the, in, in the constitution, Mm. And why is it that we have no capacity? The mighty UPDF has no capacity to defeat the DF, which mm. is now expanding with the, uh, uh, the, the, the international terrorist group, mm. the, the Islamic State, you know, terror group. So where are we? Mm. Is it propaganda? Is it a real threat? Have we failed to secure our borders? Mm. Where are we standing? The second issue that is stood out for me politically is the, the, the Somalia admission mm. into ESC. Mm. I, I think that the exaggerated ambition for expansion of the East African community without even having any element of effectiveness on the pillars of the, of the community is very reckless. Mm. Because what are the pillars of the East African community? Mm. The, you have economic integration, you have the, the common market, mm. which, which governs now the economic integration. We are failing mm. of a fulfillment of the common markets protocol. Mm. We have had a back and forth mm. of chasing of goods and that borders on the economic, but the decisions are political. Mm. Back and forth eggs, Kenya chases eggs, Kenya chases milk, mm. Tanzania is fighting over crossing chicken. Mm. We are fighting still at the basics. Mm. Then we don't have a proper criteria of admission of new members. Why do I say this? Mm. Whereas the treaty says that if you are neighbors to two countries who are members, you share a border, mm. then you can be admitted to the community, meaning that the community can expand to the whole of Africa because <laughs> we are all neighbors of each other, yeah. north, east, to west. The, the East African community, will, if we continue with this recklessness, mm. will become African Union of some sort. Now we have entered into the horn mm. of Africa and, and Ethiopia is warming up to join. So when you look at that, we have limping members of the East African community. Mm. Burundi, South Sudan, DRC, DRC which has not even fulfilled any of the requirements. The basic requirements. Yeah. yeah. And then you rush to join in a failed state, Somalia, with the controversy of Somaliland, with all the controversy of terrorists. Even mm. this year we lost troops mm. in the hands of terrorists, Al Shabaab in Somalia. So are we integrating chaos? Are we integrating stability? Are we having a, a, a warmongering ambition? What is it that we are up to? But, I'm yet to really to understand that. don't you that. think um, um, the increase, increasing the number of members of, of the East African community serves to correct the historical injustice? Of, Which is historical of, injustice? Of, of fragmenting Africa. You know, we have, whereas before, EU used to benchmark from the old East African community. Mm. Now EU has since surpassed us. And we have an opportunity of benchmarking from EU, SADC, and mm. all these seemingly stable mm. regional groupings. Mm. The, the way, you know, scrutinizing the new membership, it should even be phased out. Mm. Apply, become an observer, so that you first learn the practice. Mm. Once you've mastered the practice, become a co-opted member, mm. so that you have some element of decision making. As you clean your house. Mm. And one, <coughs> once you have fulfilled mm. a visa waiver, you have fulfilled the waivers on commodities, free movement, to enable the basic mm. integration aspect is free movement of people, goods, mm. and services. 
Once you have fulfilled that when you are co-opted member, then you become a full member. Mm. Get admitted. But ours, we start from nothing. We say, they them run from inside. You throw the RC. I don't know whether now they've sent their, their, their ARA members. Mm. But the, the, South Sudan has just paid, just to take over the chairmanship. Mm. <laughs> After so many years, people are still paying visas mm. to South Sudan. We saw the distribution of jobs. We are still quarreling. So we can't even master the basics. Mm. To say, okay, you have learned our practice. Now become a co-opted member. Start a decision making up to ministerial level. Mm. Then we admit you and you become a president and you start now chairing summits. Mm. But now Sarva Kira has just processed $15 million for purposes of chairing the summit. And, and the person, even the, the inaugural speech, He's still, was he he's still struggling to know some heads of so state. So it cost South Sudan 15 million US dollars yes. to get the embarrassment that they got that with they, the yeah, they paid for the embarrassment. Uh, so, that, that, so when you go from that, mm. then you have, for me, climate change equation mm. becomes a political decision because we are losing lives. Mm. We are losing lives to, to mudslides. We are losing lives to floods. Just this year, we lost lives mm. in Imbari floods, Kasese floods, and the recent Rexoro mm. mudslides killing people. We have floods washing our bridges, including mm. main bridges on the highways. Mm. I think the Masaka Ambarara Highway has now had its second, you know, blockage due to floods and, mm. and, 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 and the carving in of roads. Mm. So we have that situation. All feeder roads have been swept away countrywide. And, mm. and I don't see political leadership on climate change other than the huge delegations so we are carrying to climate summit meetings. Mm. I don't see leadership on, on the climate change question in this country. For me, that together with the messed up by elections and Vararo question, mm. Then the FDC crisis, of course, mm. are the major political events of the year 2023. Really interesting there. And I know um, there will be room to comment, especially on, on the issues, especially emphasized around uh, expansion of ESC. I know expansion of stability is one of the core ten uh, pillars of NRA. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe... Major will comment on that as we go along, but also on the security question, whether that now becomes a permanent problem that derives from the instability in Eastern Congo, or it's something that we can solve as, as Uganda. We shall be answering those as we get along. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abirate. And moving on to you, uh, Dr. Jambo, what are some of the key political events um, that stood out for you in 2023? Yeah, um, although the year has not ended, we still have a few days. I think this year is slightly better than last year okay. in many aspects, mm. uh, irrespective of what Sarah has said. Mm. You know, 2023, we're just coming from the confusion of COVID. I mean, mm. 2022, mm. confusion of COVID, which had allowed a lot of bad things to happen in this mm. country, including misappropriation of funds. Mm. Uh, so we started the, this year with some confidence that uh, at least now we can move mask-free and uh, the things of social distance have now remained in state house and other places <laughs> is where we are seeing people still in masks. I think that was a plus. The second thing is that uh, people came out of COVID with a lot of hope. Mm. Young people went to complete their levels of education. Mm. And uh, many of them, at least uh, today at the university, were just graduating, the COVID students, the ones we really brought in during COVID. Mm -hmm. And it was a big relief because I've been running two semesters in one. And the next year now we are going to have uh, no more semesters. I think that is good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other things that happened is that uh, the country was given some uh, entertainment of mm -hmm. some sort political entertainment. You remember the, 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 the birthday celebrations mm. from December last year. We have been having birthday celebrations, especially in State House, mm. in State House arenas. The president and his son have been competing in the birthday celebrations. Mm. And those the birthday celebrations had the political 
uh, undertones. You remember out of those birthday celebrations came a movement known as the MK movement. Mm. Uh, I don't know what it means. Mm. But the MK movement has come up with a number of things. And for us who study the history of Uganda, it has really confirmed what I've been arguing. That you see, in this country, the president is not comfortable to hand over to anybody, including his son. So there came a MK movement, which was called Standby Generator. Mm. And uh, you remember the, the, the general resigned mm. last year from the army. Uh, was it a resignation? Yes, he said it himself. Mm. Then Mwenda went and he said it was not true. He has not oh, resigned. Yes, yes, yes. He has not resigned mm. because he wanted to go to politics. That's mm. what we were told. Mm. And the signs showed, because he, it is only fools who would take the thing as a birthday celebrations. Mm. Birthday celebrations where you are doing political things, mobilizing people and talking to them. Mm. And there was a question that can somebody start politics when he's an arm officer, but this was also a waste of time. Mm. There are so many of them who are already doing politics when they are army generals, mm. the current the current Minister of Internal Affairs have never re retired from army. Mm. He's a serving minister sitting on one side of government mm. and uh, therefore partisan. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, Major, uh, Major Edward Katumba has never retired from the army. Mm. He's a serving politician participating in, in partisan politics. I've heard him several times saying for us in the movement. I've heard mm. him with my Years. Mm. So those who have been arguing that Mohosi cannot uh, do politics are just because maybe they have amnesia, they forget mm. very fast. Mm. But uh, the, the thing that has been very clear, that movement seems to have now been uh, quashed with another movement, Mzei Tova Kumeini. Mzei Tova Kumeini, for those who may not understand the language I'm talking about, mm. uh, they are telling the old man not to leave the main road. Mm seem to have defeated the MK movement. Mm. And the MK movement has slowly fizzled out. And Tova Kumein is now the bigger thing. You saw it was ended by the, 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 the Mzei himself, celebra not even celebrating, mm. but having a kasiki for the 80th birthday, mm. which was a big bash at at uh, Kololo, mm. uh, Kololo, uh, Kololo uh, uh, Indo Stra Stadium mm. there. So that has at least given us some peace. Uh, maybe the father is not going to struggle with the son. Mm. But I think it is a precursor for something that is coming in the future, which mm. is not bad. But for me, the only argument I think is mm. that it should not give advantage to other people. Uh, people normally ask me, what is the problem of MK? Mm. MK uh, showing his ambition and uh, wanting to become a president. I am saying he should be given uh, that opportunity, but he shouldn't uh, hide on the back of his uh, father. Mm. Mm. And uh, I've been liking him. He, 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 say, he, he praises him as the greatest man in the world, and which is okay for mm. any, any son of any person. Mm. It is okay. He should come out leave government and start on his business and then he can form his movement mm. and we shall support him. Mm. Let him leave government, leave state house. Of course, he can go to visit his father, mm. but he, <laughs> we will be very happy if he did so like all the other candidates. Mm. Then the other thing that happened in this country, which you have forgotten, yes, is the famine that he was raging in Karamoja. Mm. I think this country forgets so fast. Uh, I did not see anything substantially being done to, to, to really help Karamoja out of the situation it was in. Mm. I don't see a substantial project or projects or policy, uh, nothing. Mm. What we ended up with was the Mabati saga, which you had forgotten. Mm. The Mabati saga <laughs> was the most <laughs> fundamental thing that has happened in the history of Uganda, mm. where red-handed people in government mm. were alleged to mm. have stolen Mabati, of all things, mm. equal to chicken, sort of. And it really, it really 
the, the, it disturbed this country. Mm. And some people really cannot walk. The other day I was in a, in a certain school, which I will not mention here, and one of the people who was alleged to have uh, mm, taken the Mabati, when he arrived, the kids shouted, and mm. he thought he was very popular, until mm. he, heard, he heard the word Mabati, and I saw the teachers struggling to tell the kids, please, please, this is a minister, keep quiet. Keep quiet, this is a minister. But that Mabati saga, many but, people. But why is it to the kids? Many See, people would have looked. Taking away their activism. Many people would look at it as a small thing. <laughs> the Mag Mabati saga was just a, a tip of an iceberg mm. of the theft that is in the government mm. and with impunity. Mm. And the Prime Minister was saying, what is wrong with it? Uh, this Mabati not have been given to the people of Uganda. Mm. This is the Prime Minister, the custodian of government business. Mm. He's saying, what is the problem with it? Uh, did they take them to Kenya or anywhere? So uh, it is really showed. And the President, unfortunately, did not reign on this matter. Mm. It has just been left. The people who were charged uh, are still there. Others have been withdrawn. You have seen the 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 the... the the person who is in charge of DPP. People, the DPP has started withdrawing cases, mm. withdrawing cases, and, and, very, she's a karma joke. and I want to assure you that very soon all the cases will be. I really want to see, other than the the four or five uh, civil servants in mm. the prime minister's mm. office, mm. these politicians, I don't see anybody who is going to be convicted. Mm. Then the other thing uh, that has been very very important in our country was the war in Ukraine. Mm. The war in Ukraine affected us in a number of things. Mm. Uh, if you can remember, the fuel prices yes. went up during that time and the explanation was that the war in Ukraine had caused a lot of problems and it has never gone back. In fact, it is going up and up and up. Mm. And therefore, <clears throat> when fuel goes up, it now means that the life uh, in Uganda is very expensive mm. and that has affected so many people schools had to increase school fees and so many other things and everybody would refer to uh, the, 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 the price of petroleum mm. uh, and the war in Ukraine was the big issue mm. uh, the, uh, to, to sum up internationally because some things have already been said by Sarah here I will not want to repeat them mm. was the 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 the, the, the the, the, the conflict in, 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 in Israel mm -hmm. and the Palestine. Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that thing was a very huge shock mm -hmm. that uh, some funny people would kill over 1,000 people mm -hmm. with the security that is in Israel mm -hmm. and everything. And more so how Israel responded mm. and how people have been very partisan and selective mm. in this matter is something that has really disturbed me. Mm. I'm happy that my country has not come up openly. Mm. I don't know where they belong. They have not they have decided. The president to uh, advocated for a two-state solution. Yeah, he, that was in 1950, 1967. So there is nothing new about it. We, we are uh, the NAM summit. There is nothing new about it. Maybe it is an alignment. Mm. Uh, but uh, I was really shocked mm. how people have been arguing that it is okay if uh, some rebels in Gaza mm. or some forces have gone and uh, killed some Israel mm. lights. So it is okay that Israel can be given a chance to carry out a genocide. Mm. And they have been shocked and wondering this world order, what has happened to it? Mm. That okay, some, some, uh, some forces killed the people. Mm. Now, does it mean that Israel can be given a blank check mm. to carry out a genocide? Because what Israel has done, it qualifies for genocide. Mm. Bombing places where there are civilians, mm. including hospitals, mm. and innocent babies, innocent mothers, innocent people dying. Mm. And the slow thinkers have been telling me, how about if the uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Gaza uh, terrorists are hiding in a hospital. Mm. Does it now mean that you kill 
mm. everybody. Mm. And uh, so far, more than 10,000 people have died. Mm. And those are very, uh, are very, uh, are, are, are very limited numbers based on, uh, on, on, on Israeli sources. Mm. Uh, it, it is something that has really shown the world that uh, some people can be given a right to carry out certain things. I just imagine if this was in Africa, mm. any country in Africa, be it in Uganda or Congo mm. or any other place, America, Britain and their allies, they would be here. Mm. Uh, pretending to pretend over against genocide. Mm. But moreover, when genocide was in Rwanda, what did they do? Mm. Uh, 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 it, they would have not accepted that. But for Israel, it is allowed. And uh, I get surprised when uh, poor Ugandans are pulled into this uh, mm. bogacy argument. And their arguments are based on on, on Christianity and mm. none of it. Mm. Just to give you information, in Israel, there are only 1.9% mm. Christians there. Yeah. In fact, Muslims are 16%. Muslims are more than uh, more than Christians. Christians. Mm. So this issue is not religious, and uh, our mm. people have been uh, forced to quoting the Bible, that that's how God used to do, mm. and therefore they justify that God is still fighting on the side of Israel. There is no God mm. that uh, supports <laughs> genocide. And if that God exists, I'm not part of that mm. God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that genocide, I know it can be anywhere in the world. Mm. And if we are not sympathetic with the people of Gaza, then we are, can never be sympathetic to any society. So yes. for now, I will stop here. Yes, thank you very much. And of course, we'll come back to hear more and more of uh, those interesting insights. Uh, the last one being uh, the issue in Israel, Gaza, which I think has taken the world by storm. Uh, I was actually a bit surprised that you brought up Ukraine. It seems to be a long forgotten issue. But yes, it is affecting Ugandans in commodity. But even another thing it does affect is fertilizers, which also generally increases the price of items. Uh, but moving on to you. No, just maybe before somebody comes. Yes, please. Ukraine is a big issue uh, because Sarah talked about climate change. Mm. Because of Ukraine problem, mm. France started the, again to use coal True. because the, 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 the supply of gas had reduced. Mm. And you know, the use of coal is very dangerous, especially to us in the third world, mm. because we don't have mitigation fact, uh, capacity. Mm. We don't have hospitals. In Mulago, uh, in most cases, the, the machine for cancer, uh, <coughs> cancer treatment is it, 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 it's life expectancy. In a year, it can be functional for two months, mm. and 12, I mean, 10 months is dead. So we need to be worried when people start again using coal. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for that. And moving on to you, Mr. Osheno, uh, what were some of these key events that uh, you'll remember from 2023? The, the issues, as has been raised by both my brother and sister, mm. and those are the sad situations. But I must say that, uh, to me, the one thing that happened as a friend is that at last in 2023, NRA has been laid bare naked. Uh, from 1981, including the Bushes, Mr. Museveni sought to run around the world, including to particularly imperialist forces on the one hand, and then the Gaddafis and some of the terrorists from the Middle East backing him in very many other ways uh, to <coughs> the legitimate and democratic elected government of Uganda in the name of fighting for human rights, and then from taking over power to date running on the thing about coal security. Mm. Um, they've been laid bare, meaning that security can no longer be the primary thing that NRA can boast about. One, mm. as I said, you know, they failed in many cases to protect our lives and properties. And uh, number two, they already had gone ahead and lost in some of the, the, the battles in, 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 in neighboring countries, including Congo. <laughs> So security in other languages, in a more organized way called law and order, you know, mm. uh, um, it is no longer the thing that they can say that, well, they hold it high. Mm. Yes, they have total control of government mm. and control, control, control of the security apparatus, but seemingly it's basically to secure the survival of the regime and secure the survival of certain privileged families mm. in the regime. Mm. Uh, uh, beyond that, neither here nor there. So that's very important. And I can say, I've told even this program again and again and again that it is a conversation that can no longer be had. And we wait for time next year 
when politics hopefully gets normalized, that I'm able to have a conversation with Comrade Witch, political conversations, and then we begin to be, begin discussing issues in economics, on uh, on um, on uh, on uh, on, um, on taxation, on uh, on uh, security, on our track records, on uh, on health services, on education. So we'll do that. So no, they've been laid bare naked on. Mm. But number two, also linked to that, is the human rights reports, some of which have been discussed on this program mm -hmm. many, many times, to confirm the fact that the number one human rights abuser in this country as a regime has been Museveni, not, 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 not Idi Amin. Uh, and, and so those to me, based on um, you know, the reports from the, uh, uh, as presented to the National Assembly by the opposition, and the manner in which uh, the, the, the regime attempted severally to defend itself against the human rights abuses uh, how that have been presented by the opposition to the extent that throughout this year, I did not expect that two, this year would end would be here uh, with some Ugandans still, you know, lacking in, uh, in 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 prisons, some people mm. missing, and as I said, other victims of torture unexplained mm. uh, by this regime. So I think to me, those have been uh, primarily the case. But that's having been said, you can then go ahead and extend. The other is this thing called corruption. Mm. To the extent that is also the year when I reflected back to what Betty Kamir had said the year before mm -hmm. about corruption and talk about a, a lifestyle audit. I know part of the programs in which we discussed, I think a few weeks ago, we were discussing mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, whether how well we, we spend our little monies from our coffers. And part of it is uh, the extent to which we, 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 we borrow, you know, uh, is it 18 trillion or something or thereabout. Mm -hmm. so, we borrow money to use, we borrow money, to, but instead, we borrow money to abuse. Mm. So that corruption, Betty Kamir says, let's go through lifestyle audit, Museven says officially, no, don't go there, because if you go down there, you know, my regime can fall. Mm. But linked to that is also primarily the question of the big scandal that uh, Comrade uh, 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 Ojambo uh, 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 talked about. Mm. The Mabati The Mabati scandal. Mm. To me, has been the biggest political shock in this country. Ideally, if we were a democracy, go this government would have fall fallen. This regime would have fallen. Mm. If we had been a democracy, at least Mr. Museveni himself would have offered uh, to resign. To the extent that 23 or thereabout of his ministers were not alleged factually, evidence suggests that this guy stole my batteries, including Mr. Museveni's Minister for Finance, who is the person Museveni appointed to hold onto our money in the pockets, to the extent that my batteries could find themselves in the man's backyard. Mm. What more evidence do you need? Of course, we have lawyer which from Ontario will can take the entire school pay to simply say that no, those Mabatis flew mm. and you have no I evidence. Think, I think it was this so, week where we saw the Minister of Finance uh, calling out corruption in the Within the, government. The, the other week, Minister of Finance, I, I did not hear that. I want to make sure that I go. It was a very uh, emotional, he, 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 emotional he, 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 monologue from the It should have found me in a church because I wanted me to pray <laughs> and forgive her. So, 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 so those to me were huge. Mm. But most importantly, also that this Mabati thing mm. happened that the Mabati is being taken, as my brother is suggesting, from Karamoja. You know, in others, from the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. I was in some television program, and I don't know, some other network, and I don't know whether it was Visara. I actually, I sort of held back myself. You know, I'm an emotional guy. Mm. I actually genuinely held back myself. Code at which your regime nearly made me do tears on a live television program, mm. considering and imagining the children of Karamoja that we all see around Kampala. Mm. Considering what I know about Karamoja, and I hope a lot of you have been down there. Mm. I know there's some people in NRA who only go down there for gold, you know? Mm. But if you go to Karamoja and you know the livelihoods of those people and the story, and also if you know about their goals mm. in, and their wealth and how these people, as our ordinary citizens, ought to be able to suffer, they're the last people from whom uh, these guys needed to have stolen that. And I now recall one other program. Uh, Sarah, you, 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 you're very nanny, but you're in trouble with me. The, we, Sarah and I were in some television network, mm. and part of the debate was, uh, how we would see how the next month, six months would pan up. I think both of us... Six months and pan up? No, we were pan having up, a discussion. How six months post 
the scandal would, 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 would pan out. What might happen mm. is uh, the head is going to roll, is Museveni going to have a cabinet reshuffle, things like that. And possibly both, possibly both go to roll. We expect something to happen. But I think I recall Sarah was less optimistic than I was. You know, mm. but we expected something to happen. Mm. Whatever it was, I don't know. But for me, I genuinely thought Mr. Museveni was going to overhaul his thing regime, particularly because yeah. Comrade of Owen yes. says. Yeah, sorry. Just to repeat so. what I said, mm. I don't think Museveni, <laughs> President Museveni, is committed mm. or has ability to fight corruption anymore in Uganda today. And I've said this, and I've asked people to challenge me with evidence. Mm. And I did say when the Karamoja saga broke out, even on this show, mm. I betted that he would send. Is he that do when nothing. you talked about the monkeys and the Yes, mangos? I said he would do nothing, and indeed he did nothing mm. in the popular monkey. No, come, 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 what you saying? Could you repeat the monkeys now? <laughs> 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 so, 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 did you watch that? So, so that is, is, is extraordinary. So to me, those ones stood out. So just to re-emphasize in terms of concluding with that one, mm -hmm. I genuinely thought something was going to happen. And to the extent that nothing happened and we're concluding the year with the NRA ministers, including his finance minister, prime minister, and all this kind of sitting in his cabinet, confirms to me that, Sarah, you're my saintly sister. You're absolutely right. I have given up on Museveni. Corruption is yes. their middle name. His middle name it's and is part of the arrangement. Power. It's basically a means yeah. to keep power. And so, shockingly, that was to me confirmed in the year uh, 2023. Mm. Just briefly on the foreign thing, mm. I think I'll take, first of all, in the the question of uh, the Sahel. Mm. The no, I, 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 I think we'll, we'll get to that um, yeah. as we move on. Because but I was talking about events of the, mm. the, the year. Okay, okay. Yeah. You can I'm talking about the, yeah. about the ends the of the coups, year. That, yeah. that, that, so, so the schools to me were very, very inter interesting. Mm. Mm. And also for the first time, I was telling other, 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 other programs that um, I was beginning to understand military school leaders. So if you actually see some of the, the languages and the messages under the circumstances, you begin to say, mm, maybe these guys have got a point. So maybe once in a while, some of these guys dressed in suits, uh, maybe once in a while. They need some, to switch positions. Yes, and some of well, maybe once in a while. If anything, these guys are saying the right things when you talk about the Sahel thing. Mm. And in all cases, quite frankly, they're saying the right thing, including two specific ones where they were very, very clearly saying not only the right things, but they're saying the right things with, with evidence that they're actually totally uh, uh, dubious uh, foreign agents uh, mm. uh, on the continent. But linked to that was the fact that... Um, I don't know the latest, it was last week, it was there two weeks ago, where Mali, Burkina Faso, and you this historian here, and I think Niger, uh, talking confederation. Mm -hmm. True. And, and I think this is a new big, as in terms of conversation, that whatever the case, these military guys, mm -hmm. we could call them radicals, Comrade would like me to call them revolutionary, you know, is actually a conversation that going forward, how these nation states, and I see ECOWAS and the rest of the African Union, and of course all of us who are mm. believers in multi-party democracy, we can say anything else. But as an independent nation states, it's a very interesting development going forward. Mm. So if you can see that these guys are possibly seizing, you know, mm. the mantle of, of African identity and statehood and, and priority, including some of the issues, simply saying daring uh, 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 um, France, and particularly the fact that, you know, to date, this country, and you know, these are things I also didn't believe, I didn't know, mm. uh, and in many cases later, I didn't believe, mm. that actually these countries, guys have got to pay pay rent, you know, pay back France up mm. to today. Mm. These are criminal global matters that should be put on the table in the UN, mm. and I think the sooner all of us, maybe even in Uganda, we begin to say that we stand in solidarity with, with Francophone African nation states, and they become part of our new campaigns like we did you know, over the, 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 the liberation struggles in Southern Africa, mm. the better. Solidarity, of course, you know, just the issues that have been said, Ukraine and others, but on the uh, Arab-Israeli question, mm. no, it is basically that um, 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 the Israelis, you know, if you look at the Zionist Israelis, mm. uh, are basically controllers of Anglo-America establishment in Washington and London, and the, you know this case. For the moment, up to this today, they control the world, and that's what has been happening. Right. So, so they, they they don't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're almost like the special balalo of Uganda, mm -hmm. are doing the best that they did in, <laughs> yeah. in, in Uganda. Thank you very much for that. It's interesting because um, 
I've, I've been following your, not evolution, but um, your flow of thought throughout, especially those issues of conflict, and seems to, seems to introduce a flow within the, the front as of multi-party dispensation that at some point it can also serve to perpetuate redundant situations yeah. or economics, political economic situations. Yeah. All right, um, and I, I would like to <laughs> move on to Major uh, which I, 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 would, I would really have loved for it to be a proactive uh, answer. <laughs> like, uh, the rest of what were, the, what were the, what are your main picks for the year? And I will give you that room, but it seems that uh, <laughs> there's also a lot of pending reaction uh, stemming, of course, from... He doesn't from, have to respond. <laughs> I want you don't have to so respond, much. but there were issues raised yeah, around security. I, I, won't, yeah, so, and, I won't respond so much unless <laughs> yeah. somebody tried not because this discussion should just be mere mentioning the occurrences. Yeah. Yes, yes. But if any of my colleague tempted instead of mentioning, mm. but interpreting, mm. that leads to twisting, mm. then I will comment. Oh, but if it is just a chronological mentioning of events, mm. I have no issue with it. Okay, please. So mm. I start with World Bank report. I just looked at the World Bank report, which was saying mm. Uganda improved from 4.7 to 5.7. So we developed. There was economic development mm -hmm. in whatever terms that you talk about, but by World Bank report, and that is not an NRM report. It's a World Bank report you can't Google. Mm -hmm. So that was good for the year. And I expect more next year mm -hmm. if only we could fight uh, about food, food availability of food mm -hmm. and the environment, the rains and all that. Mm -hmm. the, the future is still bright for 2024. Mm. So 2023, there was improvement according to World Bank standard I mean, report, and that is good for 2023. Mm. But I also like to say that we are colored by deaths, so many deaths, uh, mm. card, uh, we lost, including vulnerable old boys of Ontario school, like the former PS Finance who was moved to to Prime Minister, Keith. What is so special Keith. with this entire school? Keith died, so... It's a cabal of interest. No, no, but <laughs> Keith died and many others died. Mm. Mm. So we, it is worth noting that we should know the valuable lives that we lost, mm. and uh, there are many. Uh, the, the, the year also was characterized by democracy. We continued to propagate democracy as a country and as a party. Mm. We had several by-elections. Some we lost, mm. and we concede because we're a democratic uh, country, like we lost in a, our flag bearer lost in Serere. Mm. And uh, Apache, a I think. Apache, we a lo, a patch, which yeah. one is Apache? Oyam, no. It was Oyam, Oyam we lost. Sorry, yeah. So we democratically concede. Mm. But our friends, when they lost, they say there's manipulation. Mm. For us, when we lost, we don't even go to court. We said, let it <laughs> So we had democracy. <laughs> uh, however, before I leave democracy, I think. I think uh, the, uh, oh, the district of the speaker was mm. kind of not good. Okay, in, in, in the language of our party chairman, who is also the president the of the Republic, he said it was like a film. Yes. Mm. It was like a film. And I think we shouldn't go that direction. Mm. So if we're looking at the good things of the year and the bad one, that qualifies for bad, and we shouldn't make it happen again. Mm. So that's the area of democracy. Uh, but otherwise, south of that, we had a very smooth country. Uh, save for security that I will mention. And that is why I, I thought that the opposition are now raising issues to disrupt the smoothness. <laughs> that if we let these people run smoothly, what shall we tell the voters? Mm. So that is why now they seek up in parliament. But they, it, we have a smoothness. Environment issue continue to disturb us. Uh, things are no longer expected as it was when we were young, where you know when rain is coming, when it is not coming. So it calls for, and the environment manifest that is a serious thing to contend with. Mm. And then East African, Federal, I mean East African community continued. But I like to point that the presidency of Salva came, we shouldn't read into too much of the, the words that he messed up. I keep saying that my father had many girls uh, he used to particularly confuse a doer and a yugi. Mm. Whenever he's calling a doer, he thinks he's calling a yugi. Mm. Until he starts calling, then a yugi said, but daddy, you are calling a doer. Mm. But here you are saying, I'm not talking to you. But you are calling a doer, not me. Me, I'm a yugi. Mm. So some of these words, you can mess them up. Mm. 
mm. and therefore we shouldn't read too much into you Salva know the King. cartoon. And, and what's you, your... you know the cartoon with some moderator of the publisher. You yeah. know the cartoon where I say, I am the <coughs> president of which country? This is a serious process. But um, Major, just to com- uh, true, uh, I wanted you to comment um, uh, particularly on, on the quandary, which is that um, expansion of, of East African community recklessly. You know, the, the, the charter is so detailed. The East African, the, the instrument that establishes East Africa is so detailed. Mm. There is a technical body which mm. checks the incoming state to have met all the criteria. Mm. And therefore, we do believe that that technical competency is always exercised. Mm. But also, I think uh, the admission uh, is on, I think, unanimity. Mm. All states have to say yes. If a state objects, I think it uh, vetoes out. Mm. So we do hope that the procedures in place to check to bring in DRC to bring check to bring in Somali, mm. the technical people do their, their, their thorough work, mm. and then the mini- council of ministers is there before mm. the summit. Mm. So I have confidence in the instrument that establishes South Africa, I mean East Africa, but also the procedures there in. Mm. So I I thought it is a job well done. Mm. Uh, I personally I the year was shaped. And me, maybe me and the party, because mm. it is a year that I traveled to so many countries. I went to German, I think, twice. Mm. I went to Denmark. I was in the UK. I was in China. I was in Rwanda. And all this in the bid to, to one. You should always invite uh, uh, me with you. Uh, one, one, I will. <laughs> one of them is to are, say. Are you part of the people in power? Many of them to say that. You see. <laughs> <laughs> repeated lies appear like the truth. Mm. If you wake up now, Hola, and you say you are Salong, mm. and you repeat, I'm Salong, or Salong, or Salong, some days they'll start calling you Salong. Mm. So our opponents have gone out and told falsehood <laughs> and falsehood and falsehood. Mm. So it is just prudent that we go and contradict and tell our version of the story. Mm. Otherwise, fall, repeated falsehoods, falsehood appear like the truth. Mm. So we have gone in all that. And we also bettered our relationship with other countries. So the party and the government, like in Germany, Denmark, UK, I was actually, I went with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Mm. So we thought that being a ruling party and having a government in place, instead of having conflicting roles, mm. we devise a system where we move together. Mm. And we tell the government that, look, we, the party, we are the one who marketed the manifesto. Mm. And in our manifesto, we had component of foreign affairs. Let's go together. Mm. And we have done it. Yes. And then... Uh, uh, so, uh, security, we had almost thought it was a foregone thing mm. until again the security actors think that ah, if we don't do something, uh, we, they will think we are gone. And it's very easy to cause uh, security, uh, just as one act is enough to cause problems. So mm. we gain experience that, but otherwise it was smooth. Mm. I just wanted to mention that uh, I think they, for sure the generals who have gone to seek mandate of the people. Mm. Leave our own general appointed, like the Ronda was appointed a minister or something. But the generals who have gone to constituencies, including Utafiri, they are all retired. They are all retired officers. Mm. They are all retired because it is a requirement at the nomination. Mm. It's a requirement of the nomination that you saw. So Utafiri, I think, for, for avoidance of doubt, is a retired general. Mm. And then maybe the other putting in perspective is Tova Kumain. Tova Kumain is uh, who is speaking to who. Mm. Tuva Kumain is the grandchildren. Mm. Uh, the Bazuku. Yes. Mm. Actually, more or less than urging the grandfather, the grandchildren were actually urging other Ugandans that be on the main. Meaning the idea was that they were a side road. Mm. So they were actually pulling people from the other road, said, please, keep on the main road. And that is synonymous to standby generator because it had appeared at that moment like conflicting path, mm. which path to follow. So they're saying, come back to. Otherwise, the, all the main, the, our party chairman has remained on the road anyway. Mm, mm. So, but all said, it looks like the assessment <laughs> that uh, we seem to be on one route now is mm. clear. Mm. Uh, thanks to those who have been doing it. We are on one route. And then the other <laughs> part of the year that I'm very happy about mm. is the health of Museveni. Mm. At one time, it was mentioned that he had a 
Corona. COVID. Mm. And I think it stopped many of our meetings because our secretariat team were supposed to meet him. He's our chairman. Mm. Whatever we are doing at the secretariat, we are doing on behalf of him. Mm. Ideally, if he was not a head of state, he should be sitting with us and the secretary as chairman. Mm. So we often have many meetings. So in one of the meetings we are supposed to go and we are told, no, the meeting has been postponed because mm. of his health. Mm. And I really got worried. One time I was driving out of my gate and I was blank. I said, suppose something happens, God forbid, please. Mm. So when it turns out that the health of the president was good and he can do press ups, mm. it really made my year, the health of the seven himself. Mm. We also had the, the year punctuated by human rights report. But human rights report, mm. to a big extent, you could import state operatives like arrest. Mm. We have continued to recycle the ones which are on the video. Mm. You don't know how old the video is. But to a bigger extent, especially Western countries that I travel, is mainly on anti-homosexuality. Mm. And it's an impasse that we need to do. It now defines... How much do you have sovereignty? How much do Western powers uh, influence on what you decide? Mm. Because the anti-homosexuality bill, for once, was a bipartisan. Mm. It was actually introduced by opposition, mm. uh, Basari. Basari, Basari, mm. Basari. It was a bill introduced by opposition. So if you have a bill mm. which becomes an act supported by the entire country, mm. by both opposition and government, and the powers said, forget about it, that is what? Nonsense. So we still it calls and checks on our independence and whether we're independent or not and all mm. this. So it's a touchy issue there. But to a big extent, the human rights issue. At least I met the committee of parliament of Denmark in the parliament of Denmark. Mm. They never raise about beating on the street. Never. I met foreign affairs officials in German, including mm. the minister. Mm. They never raise about beating. For them, their concern is homosexuality. Mm. So to the outsiders, what builds Human Rights 2023 is actually homosexuality. Mm. Uh, Mabati agree with my colleagues. It, is, it, it really shaped my thoughts also over the, the year. And because the, the, the issue in the Mabati was borders to what you could loosely call impunity. Mm. And also it was a test on government response mm. to vice. It tested the government response. Some of us still hope that mm. the response is in store mm. and the appointing authority will act. But it was a great test mm. because it was an evidential matter that uh, uh, but it was not used for what was intended for mm. and those who did it were known. Mm. So it was a test on response to vice. And we still hope that my national chairman and the party president is on that Can matter. Can mm. It's on that matter, yeah. <laughs> uh, Prayer of the year. <laughs> uh, you are a man of faith. Mm. Now, now, on the international level, I really noticed, you know, I've worked with the UN for eight years. Mm. At a high level, mm. I've been voted by General Assembly for two Kisanja, mm. each Kisanja four years. And they vote on the nine human beings, they all work. Mm. Some, mm. some uh, dean faculty of law who was my classmate, Bazira, once told the class in Makere that I wish I had a job of one in a billion. Mm. They asked him why. He said, but if there are nine billion people in the world, mm. Chinese, Indian, and the rest, and what they elect nine, then it is one mm. per billion. Mm. So I thought I had an in-depth procedural matters on Security Council. But when it came to Israel, the, the Security Council was dead. You, you saw the, the Secretary General invoked at Article 99 today? Um, calling upon this, the Security Council mm. um, to their attention towards the, the plight of the Gazans. I mean, the thing was there, and we said, what is this Security Council about? Mm. And of course, we have that provision of veto. Mm. So when China says this, America will veto. When mm. America says this, China mm. And mm. all of them are saying in their interest. So we practically proved that Security Council is non-functional. And therefore, the global security that we had hoped mm. is no more. Mm. It's, it's really disheartening. And especially so disheartening for me, who has worked in UN at the highest level mm. and thought that I was proud for an institution that I served 
Moreover, I served it democratically because I was voted by General Assembly. Mm. 193 countries voting, sacred ballot, mm. and served for four years in Geneva, was renominated in New York, and 193 countries voting through the ambassadors. Mm. So I thought I was privy to the system and what, but when it came to this conflict, the security system of the world was dead. People mm. were dying and nothing could, nobody could do anything. Mm. I was disheartened. So this was the year that it is, but as he says, World Bank projects that Uganda next year will improve in the economic mm. development. Mm. And if the rain and then what doesn't come through. So we are hopeful and we shall keep as a party to deliver our mm. services, a PDM and all, project, all, the manif all the interventions the government has put in place. Mm. We shall do it. So that 2024, 2025, 2026, we shall seek the mandate of the people. And the people will judge us and still give us their mandate. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> you Major, have already Major, determined the outcome thank you very much, of 2026 <laughs> elections. A witch uh, for that. And <laughs> we will. In 2026. Three years to go, we know the result. <laughs> no, we, we, are, we are going into as a long brief, as we deliver we going services. To, into a brief break. Uh, we've <laughs> had four monologues of what the year was. And of course, <laughs> <laughs> we shall be moving into what we should we expect and uh, look aspire to as Ugandans going into a new year. Of course, uh, maybe I'll also give Mr. Sheno and uh, Dr. Viret a, a chance to say what are some of the positives. Uh, <laughs> as, uh, we didn't uh, we, say anything positive. <laughs> before the year ends. <laughs> you just cast. So uh, let's have a brief break and we'll be right back with our Citizens Chat Show. <laughs> National Water and Sewage Corporation is committed to providing cost-effective, clean, safe, and reliable quality water and sewage solutions in urban centers across Uganda. National Water and Sewage Corporation reaffirms its commitment to 100% service coverage, geographical expansion, infrastructure development, water quality, pro-poor initiatives, customer care and stakeholder engagement, catchment, and water source protection. Be a water hero, pay your bills to zero balance, report all leaks, busts, and illegal water connections to enable us serve you better. Reach us through our toll-free numbers on 0800-200-977 or 0800-300-977. You can also communicate with us through any of our online platforms or visit the National Water and Sewage Corporation office nearest to you. This message is brought to you by National Water and Sewage Corporation. Thank you very much and welcome back to this episode of uh, Citizens Chat Show. Oh, one of the Christmas episodes here. Though we are not wearing hats, uh, but in our hearts, uh, we are continuing with the discussion around what were the key moments of 2023 and in the first segment. Of course, we had um, several monologues highlighting some of the key issues from our very uh, esteemed uh, panel. And we will be continuing with that discussion uh of course uh as before we closed we asked uh dr virete and mr shadow <laughs> for their opinions on what are some of the gains and i'll start with you before we move on to a way forward going into 2024 uh he mentioned um economic growth as per the world bank and um, what do you think are some of the other things that we can look forward and say okay we made one step i know you have defined the two steps that we might have made backwards, but what is that one step that we, we probably... Uh, I am not actually sure whether there were any two steps made forward. So NRA continues to, on, on, on a nil draw. Mm -hmm. um, the nearest, I would say, as I said, would be um, um, a very late uh, 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 Supreme Court ruling on mm -hmm. UPC uh, in which uh, uh, the five justices led by the Chief Justice had the courage mm. uh, uh, to rule against Akena, mm. uh, Jim Akena, their partner in NRA. And that ruling was definitive in the sense that it then technically allowed uh, 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 a UPC to, 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 to have its uh, clear mm. leader, as it were. It was something which has been long in coming, and as a party which has been in a, in a terrible limbo, mm. uh, I think that was a welcome thing, but, you know, it was just as was it surprising? quite clearly uh, just as too late. From my perspective, no, because as I said, I am um, reasonably legally minded. I, mm -hmm. I knew the grounds of these other things. The only surprise, of course, as you were asking, is the fact that uh, we have cadre systems and cadre judges, in many cases, mm -hmm. they make substantially cadre decisions. So, you know, it, was it surprising? 
Um, no, anything can happen under this NRA regime. Mm -hmm. But quite clearly, in terms of what it came out, I, I knew what it was. Supreme Court of Appeals ruling was very definitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Jim Z uh, um, um, appealed to the Supreme Court. It was basically time-wasting, buying time, mm -hmm. and uh, to try and continue calculating and making sure that um, they continue to, 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 to benefit mm -hmm. uh, from uh, public resources mm -hmm. at the back of the majority of the suffering Ugandans, including many people in, in, in Oyam, in Apache, mm -hmm. in, in, in Nakapiripiti, and Nagongera, and indeed many people in APA, mm -hmm. uh, some of whom are now massively, speedily losing their land. So mm -hmm. that would, I would say, was a relief to me and a relief to us. Of course, at the back of that still remains the fact that a very minor uh, uh, um, a high court ruling um, which was basically merely judicial review mm -hmm. on my case that should have taken six months to determine whether or not uh, I had won the elections, which I have, and mm -hmm. with evidence, and that I should therefore be leader of the party subject then to those appeals which have now been resolved, mm -hmm. you know, is still pending. And actually, uh, uh, it's now one year because um, um, uh, this is a matter that should have been uh, disposed of as promised mm -hmm. uh, by a High Court judge that it would be, uh, it would be 9th December. Uh, 2022 mm. is now, you know, we are we're completing the year and we're starting 2023. <coughs> but that tells you how messy these things are, mm. are in this country yeah. and that if matters involving uh, the independence political party, UPC, mm. and the presidents of the UPC, mm. and a person in the name of Ochen and others, then you don't, how many other ordinary chains, mm. you know, and, uh, and, um, and Birunjis uh, uh, are struggling some way with basic, you know, uh, 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 search for justice, basic, basically either in Tungamo or indeed somewhere in 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 uh, in, uh, in Migingo. So mm -hmm. no, uh, it's very difficult to 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 to, to pick up anything I, I I can say on this. As I said, uh, uh, two steps forward, three steps radically sharply down. Yes. But I'm much more optimistic about yeah. next year. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, also <coughs> Dr. Birete, uh Last time we had a panel here with. Uh, Doc, uh, Professor Mambusha, and he said Uganda is not a failed state uh, despite all of its issues. Uh, what do you think are some of the positives? You spoke of security and some of these other issues, but are there some gains that we have made? For example, um, the, the growth rate. <coughs> that, that no, for me, a quick other... one. One quick positive thing for me is mm. the resilience of the people. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Ugandans yeah. are very resilient. Mm. They push on regardless of mm. the mm. circumstances. Mm. And if you want to test the resilience mm. of Ugandans, mm. look at the way we've kept driving in mm. non-existent roads mm. in Kampala. <laughs> yeah. We drive in valleys, we drive. Some potholes are valleys, some potholes are pitfalls, swimming pools. some potholes <laughs> are swimming pools, but we are resilient and we are here. Mm. So the, the, the NRM might get comfort that they are still in charge. It's not a positive. Really. Even, yes. It's <laughs> <That's> a positive. <laughs> no, Ugandans are very resilient. Even economically. Credit to Ugandans. Even yes. economically. Mm. The, the, the fuel goes up, food goes up, school fees goes up. Yes. But, but we, they, they, they keep holding the country. And in fact, they don't protect. So it, it's I not the government fear, holding this country together. Yeah. It is a resilient Ugandan. Oh, oh. Yeah, for me, oh, that's oh. the only positive issue. But I I, I, I want to pick on, on the human rights issues. Mm, please. And, and that being my bias, really, it would mm. be unfair if, if I kept silent. A founder which says homosexuality seems to be the only human rights issue. The, the, the opposition. community. No, but the opposition walk out. Mm. As stated, Korea 7. Mm. Nine human rights issues. Mm. We have visa uh, visa bans being issued by the US. Oh, that was a big one by yes. the year. Yes. About, uh, we don't know how many people, but 348 MPs were issued visa bans, yeah. mm. including other government officials mm. that have disrupted the course of democracy mm. in this country. So we don't know yet how many have been banned. And this mm. time, together with their family. So people who have children going abroad, mm. studying abroad, people who have what, mm. you better protect, join us to become a human rights defender. <laughs> or else, <laughs> your children will be drawn from the schools where you are taking them in international mm. schools. Because they are following you, and we are glad about that. Mm. Everybody should ensure that the rights of their neighbor, like the Bible says, mm. love your neighbor the way you love yourself. 
Mm. I think human rights, even the origin, is clear in the Bible. Okay. Yeah, so people need to know that there are repercussions. As mm. much as mm. there is impunity here, the world can act. Mm. The other key issue we need to highlight is the World Bank suspension. Mm. We are here, everybody is quoting World Bank, World Bank, but we are under ban. Also, among other issues, is human rights. Mm. This year in February mm. is when we saw the exit of the UN Human Rights Office. Mm. Complete exit. Oh, that was another one. And that contributes to a build-up mm. of our bad image internationally. It, 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 you know, it, there are incremental things that have led us to where we are in terms of a competing record with it, I mean, under this regime where human rights violations are concerned. But, um, Dr. Virete, don't you think it's valid when it's stated that it is these issues have been happening, but it is homosexuality that has no. That's moved. just like the last kick of <laughs> to a dying horse. Mm. It is not one standalone issue. Even the human rights suspension letter, mm. human rights is among others. It mm. is not the only yeah. issue. But because of <laughs> regime propaganda, they make it seem like the uh, anti homosexuality law is but the I only cause. To them. I talk to the MPs. No, now. we yeah. have their letter. They are later, the, the World Bank later announcing yeah. suspension talks about violation of human rights, talks about corruption mm. and LGBTI rights. Mm. So it is not one issue. Mm. But because of convenience, we say these ones is just they want our our cabinet. No. no actually, by the way. That's vulgarization. If, if that's mind, just one of the issues. If you actually don't mind, mm. one of the reasons actually why they bring the homosexuality thing is, is very deliberate. Mm. Because they know by and large. It is an emotive issue nationally. Yeah. So it's easier to sell to the citizens that, you know, look, we, there's really no problem. But this, they, they are really up to this yeah, thing. They deceive, thing they which all of us are people, but human rights that. violations, corruption, mm. and the anti-homosexual attack was number three. Mm. Even the visa sanctions are very clear. Mm. Disruption of democracy. Mm, yeah. Anti-homosexual terror has nothing to do. Has it disrupted democracy? Mm. No. Mm. But it's convenient for the regime to raise mm. that, to, to deceive the people. The issue of potholes, I talked about it as, a, as an issue mm. of, uh, of, of resilience of Ugandans, which is true. Mm. But the elephant in the room is that the Kampara pothold city mm. is evidence of a non-functional mm. government. Mm. And you cannot run away from it. It's a pregnancy which is right. No amount of propaganda can wish away the failures of NRM. And it's evidenced mm. in the terrible roads. I've never seen for the record. Mm. I've, I've been to more than 100 countries. I have never seen roads, agri roads like Kampar. I know some people have been talking about Chinsasha. Mm. I've not been there recently. The time I was there, their roads no, were not as Zimbabwe. terrible. No, Zimbabwe. They oh, were not as the best, best roads, roads in Africa. Yes. Countries like Zambia, you don't find potholes. Embarrassing capital state is a verdict on President Museven and his misgovernance in this country. Mm. We are waiting for positive. I said it to the resilience of the people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you want to know the resilience of the people, go to a university like mine. Mm. You look at young people, they don't have lunch, mm. they don't yeah. have almost where to sleep, yeah. but they are doing exam and getting and they are struggling, class. And they're struggling yeah. to create it's, a it's, better future. You, you find the students, uh, for me, I'm a head of department, you, you find the student sneaking to do an exam. He does this one. He knows they will catch him with the other one, but he still insists until and by the time of the exam he has done five. Then he yeah. says, we shall see next semester. Yeah. Really resilience. But sometimes, you know, these mm. students are taken to disciplinary committee. And when you but go there, what? you wonder, really, is, is it this an issue of discipline Just or poverty? Ask them to find so someone. you find the students. I never knew that uh, there can be students in Uganda who come to Kampala to stay in mud and water houses. Mm. But they are there. They want a degree. Yeah. Because they have been left, the Minister of Education does not know whether they exist, but they are there. The loan system has collapsed. It only helps the people they know. Mm. So, me, I really feel that I agree with you. Yeah. Ugandans are really resilient people. Mm. And just if I can just confirm that, that it's almost criminal what uh, uh, Dr. Jam is talking about. Mm. If you consider that Museveni, you consider that his man, Kasaija, mm. the Mabati man, mm. you know, 
and most of his top people studied thanks to UPC for free in universities. And not only did they study for free, they were paid the salaries, including yeah. I myself, who were paid in order to go and study. study. Oh, and because it. we nearly sort of nearly striked Our because of what they are not working. You know, a flashing yeah. water is not working. I so, teach hungry students. No, but they, actually, this has just generally just touched Even me. Even primary uh, school children parking a broke. You know when they were saying they yeah. would chase away children mm. without yeah. lunch? Yeah. Yeah. A child carrying a stone mm. just to be seen with a lunch pack. Mm. The resilience mm. of Ugandans. Mm. 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 True. Yeah, Some things and uh, falsehood. Falsehood. Which country do you live in? Neither we don't break in stone. You've never seen it, or have you ever read stories of children who pack bricks? School? No, I, I invite you to the university. Yes, no, I invite do you, you, you and you speak to another. students. Where, which, <laughs> town, which world do you no, live let's, in? Let's, let's, let's <laughs> proceed with the discussion. Which world do you have? <laughs> we know you are privileged, but it's <laughs> for <laughs> Yeah, no, the, no, that is how out of time can yeah, yeah. out, and we congratulate them. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. Th mm. Th thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Dr. Biwete, as you conclude, I know you need some corroboration, but um, moving on to you, um, uh, doctor, we one of the key things now that uh, extend from 2023, of course, is that uh, the election roadmap is out, and we are looking forward to 2026, uh, which is the political year is largely 2024 and 2025. Um, what? Just a minute, yes. please. This I'm quoting allafrica.com, mm -hmm. 25th mm -hmm. March. All what? Allafrica.com, mm -hmm. 26th March, 2013. An 11-year-old pupil in Chegera district has been carrying a brick in a food container at school as packed the ranch, <clears throat> says an area MP. And this is just one. Others are in massacre, but I just wanted to confirm, <coughs> mm. to confirm that these things actually happen. Sarah, you don't need to confirm that story these things 10 happened. years Thank ago. You. But I think you. Um, these things are just, just, just show you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do, Dr. Biret, just yes, um, moving on to, to, to the discussion um, around the political climate. What do you expect uh, moving into 2024 now that, of course, we expect more heating? As we move towards uh, the next elections, what are you? What do? You, what are your expectations of 2024 politically? You know, for us who study history, we look at the past to give us the future. Yes, uh, I really see no much change. Mm. Uh, the state is going to do everything. The first thing I'm going to see very very soon there is going to be uh, proposals to amend the constitution. And those proposals will, uh, will not be to amend the constitution to bring electoral reforms, mm. but to get another window of making it easier for the regime to win the next election. Mm. I am really very suspicious that very soon we are going to see some amendments uh, which may change a, a system of voting, which may want to gag the other uh, 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 the, the other opponents and so on. So I see that, and the, that is my suspicion. Mm. Uh, why this is my own feeling. Mm. I am not reading it from anywhere. Mm. Uh, Ma, Mao might have been brought into government to do that uh, job, and mm. he should prove me wrong next year if he does not come up with some funny amendments, mm. very funny, fun mm. amendments, mm. which are going to be worse than the ones we heard of age limit and others. Mm. I'm really suspicious of him. Mm. Uh, he may come up with some of those things. Uh, number two, I think uh, with the pretext of security and so on, the electoral space, the civic space is going to narrow more. Mm. Oh. It's going to narrow and this can be brought in terms of uh, security. Of course, COVID really helped in the last elections mm. and some bomb scare. Mm. I'm very, very sure that there are going to be more bombs mm. in the churches and suspiciously <laughs> in these funny churches. Mm. And they will, uh, uh, they will justify, mm. they will justify a lot of uh, trouble. Because the way you see now, Kampala, mm. a metropolitan, is a no-go zone. Mm. You saw Bobby Wine moved everywhere. Mm. He was allowed to go and he jump around in the ginger, in, in Kamuri, in where. Mm. But he, so long as he was coming back to Kampala, mm. he was in Iluero and he was stopped mm. there. Mm. 
Mm. He was stopped in Luero. So I I am seeing this thing being widened. Mm. They may declare all urban areas, no go zones. Mm. And the issue will be to not to interfere with the commerce, security reasons. Mm. Because uh, what I know with my government, it fears the fair competition. But, but Doctor, just to information, mm. during the last elections, the Chairman Electoral Commission Stop the opposition from campaigning in all districts in central Uganda where they were very popular. Mm. Yeah, the council uh, rallies in 16 districts. Yeah, then it was COVID. Now they are going to use another excuse. Because I normally see my government pretending like a swimmer who goes for a competition. Mm. Uh, the opponent puts on gambuts and an overall. And for him, he puts on a swimming costume mm. and the uh, frog uh, <laughs> fins. Mm. And then he says, let's swim and see. Mm. And obviously, he wins. How can a man in a gambut mm. and overall swim faster <laughs> than a man in a swimming costume mm. and, uh, and uh, some frog fins? Mm. So I see that. But uh, these rains and the weather mm. also create some fear. Mm. And the government needs to come up with proactive... Uh, I would be very happy when this, if this supplementary budget was to deal with these issues, mm. the weather vagaries that are happening all over the place. Mm. I would be very happy. And that's what even a supplementary budget qualifies to do. Mm. Uh, so next year, uh, like, unlike my senior colleague, uh, with all these problems, the roads are being washed, the bridges are breaking, and so many things. Next year, therefore, is going to be a very difficult time. And the, Sarah, with the potholes, they are going to widen. Mm. I've seen MK and the company uh, uh, repairing the potholes in, the, uh, in mm. the streets, but I never heard the any single day that MK has ever been in an engineering class <laughs> to understand <laughs> how roads <laughs> can be. The engineering uh, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yes, yes, I really doubt I don't know, yes, the sitting on a tractor for political, for political <laughs> posture, <laughs> I really doubt his ability so mm. they, 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 they are going to widen but this is terrible <laughs> uh, Sarah mm. when you for you are looking at the difficulty of navigating these roads mm. driving in Kampala is very expensive mm. a place which you would have used the uh, one liter you use five liters and, because and it wears out your of car. jam then the, we have to buy spare parts. Uh, 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 some of us, we are in trouble. Every time you take a car to the, to the garage, you pay one million plus. Mm. Because the shock absorbers are dead, the bushes are torn, the, the tires are bursting everywhere. Mm. The other day, I burst a tire on Mavira, in Mavira Forest. Mm. I burst a tire just in Misty oh. to die. And the rim got bent because mm. I landed in a pothole which mm. was filled with water. I didn't know it was the one. People are dying. These accidents that you see. Mm. In Uganda, we don't care about people dying in accidents. I just don't see anybody caring. Because you don't see anything. Governments may not even report it. They don't even report it. It's journalists who report. And you don't hear anything from the Minister of Works. <coughs> saying, we have seen this. We are going to work on it. So many people. And by the way, people who die in accidents... Mm. are valuable people, businessmen, mm. technocrats. Just last week, we lost an engineer mm. with the, and these are the ones we know, mm. with, the, with the National Water and the Sewerage Corporation mm. and the district planner. Mm. Young men, one was going even to wed mm. on last weekend. Mm. And so many of those are happening. Mm. We are losing a lot of money. The media may be happy that we are growing by from five to four. I don't know what he meant, five percent, I don't know. Mm. But these things are retarding our growth mm. terribly. Because if you lose a person of an engineer, do you know how long it takes to prepare an engineer mm. and how much money it takes? Mm. They need so you don't see any statement from I have seen in other governments which function well, mm. an accident leads to a minister resigning. That's correct. Mm. Yeah. But here no statement, nothing. No accountability. Uh, so for me, I feel that we need to do the following. Number mm. one, mm. we need a better planning. Mm. And it is good that we are now in the first stage of the, our budget. We mm. need to be very careful on how we are doing this. But they have looked, I've already looked at the, the paper, the, 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 the paper, mm. 
they are saying they are just maintaining the budget as it was last year. Mm. And uh, there are issues that are emerging that I don't see happening in that uh, budget. Mm. So it means that in the end of the year, 2024, mm. may not be an easy year. But all this mm. only can be improved with good politics. Mm. I want to emphasize, as I normally say, mm. politics determines everything in a country, mm. yeah. including childbirth. Mm. Uh, we may be ha very happy that in, Af in, in the world we are number two mm. in that area, but what quality of children mm. are we giving birth to? Mm. The quality. That's why there are so many, but they are not very useful. So we really think that we need proper planning. Mm. You don't need politicians mm. to do that. You need technocrats. Mm. In this country, we need to resort to technocrats doing work which they have uh, mm. specialized in. Mm. For example, leave the engineering work to engineers. Mm. They, they are complaining all over the place, only that they don't have a voice. Mm. Because politicians are interfering. NRM, uh, uh, DP, and other MPs are now engineers in their constituencies, mm. advising engineers. Mm. Uh, people who don't know anything, I have been wondering, there have been a lot of land conflicts mm. in, in Uganda. Mm. Where are the experts of land mm. in this matter? Mm. For example, why do you get a professor of of veterinary medicine mm. to deal with land matters. Mm. Mm. Yes. The one, the who, said the commission, the one who was land. saying that the government should no take wonder. over land mm. is because he's a professor of veterinary medicine. Mm. Now you put him in a very... Land is the most important thing mm. that we have in this yeah. country. Why don't they take him to resolve don't we have the Barano problem? crisis? So for me, yeah. I feel... Then the other Spend. issue... Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> other issue... Come, our time is fast. The last but, one. Yeah, yes, the yes. last one is... Uh, uh, COVID, mm. they, they have been hearing rumors mm. of COVID re-emerging. Mm. That's in, money. in China and these other places, we need to be careful. Mm. We need to be careful. Uh, we hope that this does not take us where we have come from. Mm. Uh, you know, COVID really left us ugly. Mm. Uh, so we really hope that Minister of Health is not going to use that trick mm. again to start uh, calling us of our yeah. money. Thank you very much. And uh, in the spirit of fair play, I'd like to conclude this with a uh, submission from Major. Do, do, do you mind just a, a quick quick one, if you don't mind? Mm. That um, on the accident for which, he, sorry that it was not fatal. Mm. But I think as a lesson going forward, and we've had this conversation and we've been discussing impunity, and I think all, all the four of us agree that there's impunity in this country. Mm. One of the things we need to be pushing younger Ugandans to do, and for the you, you lawyers, I think we need to have a situation in which, um, Dr. Jambo, after your accident, you formally um, um, seek legal advice. We sue the, the government, Uganda National Roads Authority, and make sure that they take responsibility. We need to begin to take that. I worked in public organization, and, and I think we've shared this before elsewhere, you know, where um, one time, actually, I was refusing to authorize it. I think we need to begin to do some of these other things yeah. here to, in order to hold this, yeah. this, this regime to account. Thank so, you, Mr. Shen. And finally, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Robert questioned the data that I was putting. Mm. The data is here, mm. overview. Source. This is World Bank. Mm. No, hey. I didn't know what you were meant by the four and five. The one which suspended mm. that. I didn't know which one was so four it or is five. saying it Uganda's economy what? has rebounded strongly mm. with all three sectors in bracket agriculture, industry, and services withering recent successive shocks to push growth in gross domestic product in bracket GDP to 5.3% during financial year 2023 compared to 4.7% in the year before. It is clear now. So, that is how far we have gone. Mm. Now, on the, the suspension of on, on the other one, <laughs> on the other one is, for us, in, we are going to consolidate the gains. There are several gains. I can't That's mention them now. Yeah, we are going to consolidate the gains. Mm. But also, we are going to continue pursuits of ongoing interventions. That mm. is PDM and all that and all this. Mm. We are going to pursue them and make sure they work. Mm. And then we are also going to... Uh, uh, to 
to, to generally make sure everything flows in harmony. But let me comment about the General Moses' involvement on roads. Mm. Now, the president said that there were quotations mm. for people who wanted to solve the road crisis. Mm. And that when he looked at the quotation, the money they wanted, the billions, mm. the SFC engineering brigade said, no, why are they, there's no money. If the government doesn't have money, we can fix this up at less than half the cost. Mm. That is how Mozi coordinating yeah, that came into one. place. Mm. Yeah. So, 2024. So, is Mohol, the kind of engineering is know. coordinating it. But even these contractors, Uchen, don't be misled that all these contractors who build roads and schools are engineers. It is having the idea in place. Yeah. Yes, Do you think these contractors? I'm is head of engineer. He's not. Person, he's called but yes. these contractors who build schools, hospitals, roads, mm. and those who own companies, mm. it's just a supervision of this so does he capacity. Own so the company? He, he works in a. He's a presidential advisor, and that is but part of his work. How you is that so, so, but <laughs> the point is <laughs> that you do not need an engineer. <laughs> you do not know, need an engineer to fix roads. You do not need an engineer to build hospitals. Mm. That is the point. Yeah. So, for us, 2024, looking forward, we shall consolidate gains, mm. pursue our intervention, mm. gains including democracy, mm. and we think. Uganda will be a better place. All right. Thank you very much, uh, my dear panelists, for today. And I hope that uh, you've learned as much as I have. It has been insightful. We discussed uh, some of the key highlights of 2023. It's an ongoing discussion uh, this whole December. And of course, some of the things um, <clears throat> our different panelists are looking into um, or foreseeing uh, going into 2024. They say what a child can can can. <coughs> cannot see while standing, an elder can see while sitting. So it's very important for us, uh, the youth, to hear such. And thank you very much, uh, all viewers, for today. And till next time, I remain the host for the show, Portola. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm.